हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई वेलकम यू इन लेक्चर नंबर सेवन ऑन एलिमेंट्री एनालिटिक फंक्शंस इन लास्ट लेक्चर वी हैव डिफाइंड कॉम्प्लेक्स ट्रिगोनोमेट्रिक एंड कॉम्प्लेक्स हाइपरबोलिक फंक्शंस सो इन दिस लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस सम ऑफ द प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ दिस फंक्शंस एंड वी विल डू सम एग्जांपल्स रिलेटेड टू दिस टू फंक्शंस सो एज इन द केस ऑफ real functions if we consider complex sin and complex cosine function then uh, sin function is odd function and cosine function is even function sin of minus z is minus sin z this is true for all complex number z similarly cosine of minus z is cos z for all z so as in the case of real functions cosine function is even function and sine function is odd function so this uh, we can prove directly by the definition suppose first we show that sine is odd function so this is the definition of sin z we had defined in the last lecture sin z is defined as e to the power i z minus e to the power minus i z over 2i so we replace z by minus z so sin of minus z is e raised to minus i z minus e raised to minus i into minus z which is e raised to i z divided by 2i now if we take uh, negative sign outside from this 2 then this we can rewrite as negative of e raised to i z minus e raised to minus i z over 2i and if you observe this is nothing but sin z so we obtain that sin of minus z is minus sin z for any complex number z so this shows that sin z is odd function so complex sin function is also odd function as in the case of real sin function similarly we can show that cos function is even function this is the definition of cos z which is e raised to i z plus e raised to minus i z over 2 so therefore cosine of minus z will be e raised to minus i z plus e raised to minus i into minus z which is e raised to i z over 2 and this is nothing but cos z so we obtain that cosine of minus z equal to cosine of z for all complex numbers z so this shows that cos function is even function another property is sin z and cos z are differentiable functions and derivative of sin z is cos z derivative of cos z is minus sin z in the last lecture we have shown that sin z is differentiable everywhere so to prove this uh, we can use the definition of uh, sin and cosine functions sin function is defined as e to the power i z minus e to the power minus i z over 2i so if we take uh, differentiation with respect to z on both sides so d by dz of sin z this is equal to derivative of this right hand side where 1 upon 2i is constant so this is d by dz of e to the power i z minus e to the power minus i z so this is nothing but now derivative of e to the power i z is i times e to the power i z minus derivative of e raised to minus i z is e to the power minus i z into minus i we are applying chain rule for derivatives we know that derivative of exponential function is function itself e to the power z now here you can see we can take i common so that i will cancel out with this i and uh, we are left with e to the power i z minus e to the power minus i z over 
but this is nothing but by definition it is cos z and this is true for any z so here we can write for any z in the complex plane so what we obtain we obtain the same formula as in the case of real functions derivative of complex sine function is complex cosine function similarly you can prove this second using the definition derivative of cos z is negative of sin z so i am not doing that property here next uh, example is prove that sin z is zero if and only if z is n into pi that means z equal to n into pi where n is integer are zeros of sin z okay, zero of a function means the value of z for which function is zero is called zero of a function so if z is n pi sin z is zero and uh, reverse is also true sin z is zero if z is n pi so z equal to n pi and belongs to z are zeros of this function sin z that we are interested to prove so if you recall this uh, last lecture if you have seen in the last lecture we have the proved this uh, property so i am not proving that property here uh, we know that sin z square square of absolute value of sin z is nothing but sin square x plus sin hyperbolic square y so now uh, we are interested in this uh, the values of z for which uh, sin z is zero so let uh, z equal to x plus i y be a complex number for which sin z is zero so we are interested in this z that for which z sin z is zero so we assume that suppose for z equal to x plus i y sin z is zero now if sin z is zero absolute value of sin z is also zero so we can write square of absolute value of sin z is zero and uh, using this uh, we can give number one so we use number one here uh, we can replace this uh, modulus sin z square by sin square x plus sin hyperbolic square y equal to zero so what we are doing we are using that number one now you can see both are real functions sin square x sin hyperbolic square y and both are non-negative so if addition of two non-negative numbers is zero then there are two possibilities either sin square x is zero sin hyperbolic square y is zero or both are zero so if sin square x is zero sin x is zero and uh, if square of hyperbolic sin is zero hyperbolic sin is zero now this is real sine function so we know that if sin x equal to zero x is n by n belongs to z and uh, for hyperbolic sine y equal to zero the possible value of y can be decided by definition of this we know that sine hyperbolic y is e raised to y minus e raised to minus y over 2 equal to zero so from this uh, the only possible value is y equals if we take y equal to zero then we have e raised to zero which is one minus e raised to zero okay so this gives us y equal to zero 
or we can think in this way also if it is possible directly then fine otherwise we can go in this way we can take 2 on this side and if we multiply with uh, e raised to y uh, we have e raised to 2y minus 1 equal to 0 this implies e raised to 2y equal to 1 and uh, therefore 2y must be 0 and therefore y must be 0. So sin hyperbolic y equal to 0 that gives us y equal to 0. Okay, so I remove this part but this is the way how we can understand if we are not able to understand directly. Otherwise this is simple. This uh, So from this we can directly write y equal to 0 and x is n into pi n belongs to z so the complex number z for which uh, uh, for which we are interested that sin z is 0 okay, or we are interested in those complex numbers z for which sin z is 0 so we started by taking this z equal to x plus i y for which sin z is 0 and we obtain that uh, z equal to x plus i y is nothing but n pi plus i into 0 which is n into pi where n belongs to z. So therefore sin z equal to 0 implies z equal to n pi n belongs to z. Now what about reverse process? Suppose z is n pi, n belongs to z, then can we obtain that sin z is 0? So we, we think in reverse way. Suppose z is n pi, we start from last step now. Okay, we start with this, suppose z is n pi, then we can have x equal to n pi, y equal to 0. If x is n pi, sin x is sin n pi which is 0. If y is 0, sin hyperbolic y is 0. So this implies sin square x is 0, sin hyperbolic square y is 0. And if both are 0, then this is true. And this implies this one. And from this we obtain sin z equal to 0. So instead of writing uh, this therefore we can write double implies also because all the statements are true in both the ways so we can write instead of therefore we can write double implies so from this we conclude that sin z is 0 if and only if z equal to n pi n belongs to z or in other words z equal to n pi n belongs to z these are nothing but zeros of the function sin z so we go further now similarly we can show that cos z is 0 if and only if z equal to n pi plus pi by 2 so here we can use this uh, previous result before that uh, we know that cos z is nothing but negative of sine of z minus pi by 2 okay, or we can prove this suppose we start from right hand side the right hand side is negative of sin z minus pi by 2 so first we simplify this sin z minus pi by 2 so this is uh, nothing but sin z cos pi by 2 minus uh, cos z sin pi by 2 we are using that formula 
sin alpha plus beta is sin alpha cos beta minus cos alpha sin beta. That identity is also true for complex numbers. Now cos pi by 2 is always 0 and sin pi by 2 is 1. So we obtain minus cos z. So this implies cos z equal to negative of sin z minus pi by 2. So we can give this number 1. Now we are interested in zeros of cos z. So we start by taking z equal to let z equal to x plus i y be 0 of cos z. So this implies for this z cos z is 0. And using 1 I can replace cos z by negative of sin z of sin of z minus pi by 2. So this is 0 and uh, therefore sine of z minus pi by 2 is 0. So if we use previous result we have shown that sine z is 0 if and only if z is n pi. So instead of z we have z minus pi by 2. So we must have z minus pi by 2 equal to n pi n belongs to z because n pi n belongs to z are nothing but zeros of sin z. So using this uh, result we can see that z minus pi by 2 must be equal to n pi. So from this uh, we obtain the idea that z must be equal to pi by 2 plus n pi n belongs to z. And if we start from this last step, then reverse process is also true. Z is pi by 2 plus n pi that implies Z minus pi by 2 is n pi. That implies sine of Z minus pi by 2 is 0. That implies negative of sine of Z minus pi by 2 is 0. And this is nothing but cos Z. So this implies cos Z equal to 0. So what we have shown is cos z is 0 if and only if z equal to n pi plus pi by 2 n belongs to z.